powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us to end your week. I'm Asia Gore. Our top story today, police in London are on a manhunt for the culprits in this morning's explosion on a crowded subway. At least 22 people were injured. CBS's Gavin Ramjan has the latest on the fifth terror attack in Britain this year. Terror returned to London when a homemade bomb exploded on a busy commuter train during the morning rush hour. Suddenly I heard a big bang and I turned left and I saw the fireball surge toward my side. Cell phone video from the subway car shows a white plastic bucket inside a shopping bag with what appear to be wires and a flame. Sources tell CBS News the improvised explosive device had a timer and didn't fully detonate. We uh, managed to pull ourselves away and literally jump over the fence and run down the track as fast as we can. Counter-terrorism police are scouring the scene and searching security cameras to find out who put the bomb on board. There are many urgent inquiries ongoing now with hundreds of detectives involved looking at CCTV, forensic work and speaking to witnesses. Armed police shut down part of the train line and locked down schools in this southwest London neighbourhood. Witnesses said there were children on board when the blast went off. There was an unfortunate um, little boy who smacked his head into the ground. You know, people went flying. Some passengers had minor burns and singed hair from the heat that shot through the train car. Others were hurt in the rush to escape. Hand, foot, uh, head injuries from the stampede. It's got every man for himself when that happened. Armed police remain on high alert across London until the bomb maker and any other suspects are found. Gavin Ramjorn for CBS News, London. President Trump tweeted after the explosion, quote, another London attack by a loser terrorist. Meanwhile, North Korea has launched another missile, this one making the longest flight the country has ever achieved. The move is in response to new U.N. sanctions passed this week, which are meant to stop this kind of action. The United Nations Security Council will hold an emergency meeting this afternoon to discuss how to respond. Here in Montana, classes for dozens of schools in the northwestern part of the state canceled again today due to a cyber threat of violence. Kalispell Public Schools announced all schools in the Flathead Valley will remain closed today. 31 public and non-public schools closed yesterday due to the threat that went out via cell phone and email. The FBI believes this is a credible threat. The Flathead County Sheriff's Office says persons of interest have been identified and authorities will follow up on leads today. Athletics and other school activities planned for today and tomorrow have been canceled. The Great Falls woman accused of killing her own mother is found unfit to stand trial. A Montana State Hospital doctor testified Thursday about Pamela Courtnage's mental health. Courtnage is accused of killing her 69-year-old mother at a home on 2nd Avenue North back in May. The doctor recommended an additional six months of treatment at the Montana State Hospital. The case will be reviewed again in 90 days to determine if Courtnage is fit for trial. One year after a new state crime lab opened in Billings, budget cuts triggered by shortfalls in state tax revenue threaten the future of the new facility. The 2015 legislature approved $310,000 for the 1,500 square foot facility in an effort to speed up forensic testing of backlogged evidence. But faced with a 10 percent reduction or $3.4 million in its cuts to its budgets, the Department of Justice could lose the crime lab in Billings. The Department of Health and Human Services also uses the crime lab to test child hair samples for drug exposure. The DOJ's memo to Governor Bullock warns Montana could also lose its chief medical examiner due to the unfavorable financial conditions. DOJ spokesman Eric Sell says the five employees at the Billings crime lab would be moved to the lab in Missoula. The next U.S. attorney for the District of Montana has been confirmed. Kurt Almey replaces Michael Cotter, who was asked to resign by President Donald Trump in March. Almey is the current president and legal counsel of the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch Foundation in Billings. He was nominated by Senator Steve Daines in June. Almey previously worked in the U.S. Attorney's Office as a first assistant. Both of Montana's senators praised Almey's confirmation. Mandatory evacuations for some residents near Sealy Lake's Rice Ridge Fire have been downgraded today to warnings. That includes people in Cooper's Lake area from the Sheppey Zone near Montour Cabin in Powell County. The end of fire season is near, but the Secretary of Agriculture says the record high costs of firefighting will be felt for a while. 
At the end of the fiscal year, the cost to fight wildfires across the U.S. will exceed $2 billion. About 2.2 million acres of National Forest System lands have burned. Here in Montana alone, fires burned up more than 1 million acres. Firefighting suppression costs take up 55 percent or more of the U.S. Forest Service budget. We turn now to the weather scene with Rob Griggs. And while we do still have fire dangers around the state, we're also getting a bit of cold air coming in. We're getting cold, wet air. And I wanted to show a graphic for you, Asia. For the past six weeks, we've been talking about air quality in Montana. Are you ready? Roll the bones. Check this out. We're almost clean. Yeah, Libby still has some unhealthy air because there's a pocket of uh, dry air up in that corner of the state. They're not getting the rain. Missoula, though, getting socked in with some fog and some rain. 44 degrees with light east winds about three miles an hour. Over in Helena, same thing. That isn't smoke, folks. Here's a big change. That's just good old-fashioned rain with northwest winds and uh, 39 degrees. Right now across the state, showers all over the place, including some wet snow. How long is it going to last? How much are we going to get? And what does the work week look like? We've got answers for you with the forecast in just a little bit. Asia? Thanks, Rob. We'll check back in. The Montana Board of Regents approved a large budget for the state's university system in Butte. However, MTN's John Amy learned that the state's budget cuts are expected to slice into higher education funding for 2018. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. The Montana Board of Regents Thursday approved a $492 million budget for its 16 institutions in the university system. But it's a figure that's expected to be slashed once the state enacts its 10% budget cuts. We don't know yet where those cuts will be made, um, but we will be looking strategically across campuses. Montana State was approved $228 million, and the University of Montana was allocated $144 million. Montana Tech in Butte is set for $34 million, but university heads know cuts are coming. Campuses are prepared for those, uh, but certainly given the economic landscape throughout the state with, within higher ed, that, that's not easy. While these budget cuts will be especially difficult for smaller universities like Montana Tech, Tech Chancellor Don Blackheader says the university is fiscally prepared for any budget cuts coming ahead. We do have you know, some enrollment management reserves that we use and also some contingency funds that we can use. So, you know, uh, I'm not as concerned about this year as I am maybe future years. Dealing with future budget shortfalls will require more collaboration between universities. Well, that, that's the future uh, of how we need to adapt to a new higher education in using what resources we have to deliver that best product for the students. Until then, they wait for the cuts. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Thanks, John. And the board also approved $750,000 for a new dorm facility on the campus of Montana State University. It appears Verizon Wireless is hanging up on hundreds of customers in rural Montana starting October 17th. In a letter, the company stated, quote, We discovered you are using a significant amount of data while roaming off the Verizon Wireless network. It goes on to say, quote, we will no longer offer service for the numbers listed above since your primary place of use is outside the Verizon service area. Senator John Tester sent a letter to Verizon and wrote, quote, given the importance of wireless communication for maintaining public safety, running a business and staying connected during emergencies, I strongly urge Verizon reverse its decision. Senator Steve Daines called the change unacceptable and said it's another example of the rural urban divide. A Verizon spokesperson says more than 900 customers with more than 2,000 lines are affected and their roaming costs exceed what consumers pay each month. Straight ahead on the noon news, Hurricane Irma's aftermath leaves one island abandoned. Details after the break. But first, Rob has our weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching.